Yo, what is good, YouTube? Welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, we are going to be ranking the top 10 best non-gambling point guards in NBA 2K24, my team, here at the end of Season 7. Before we hop into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Help me push towards the 30,000 subscriber mark on the channel. I upload every single day. Tons of consistent daily my team content. Would really appreciate it if y'all do subscribe. And without further ado, let's hop right into it. Starting off with number 10. I don't love this card. Penny Hardaway. Uh, no, Penny's going to be nine. We'll get back to Penny in a second. Number 10 is going to be Jalen Rose. I changed my opinion. Jalen Rose is an inch taller than Penny, but I think his release might be even worse than Penny's. And I think as a whole, Penny is a slightly more complete card. But Jalen Rose is 6'8 with a 7-foot wingspan. If he had an elite release, he'd be amazing because he is really good all the way around. Um, I mean, I say... I don't know. He is very complete, especially for his size. He's a great shooter, great speed, great dunker, great defender. Versatile, good card. Gold removable enforcer. Every defensive badge on at least gold. Like, as a whole, really solid card on paper. But the Tony Parker upper sucks. It does. It's a bad, bad upper. And it kills what otherwise is a very, very solid card. So, I don't know. Putting him number 10, Penny number 9, mainly is because I think I like Penny's release a little bit more. I don't like Penny's release that much either, though. That's the honest truth. That's why he's this low as well. Now, Penny doesn't have Kyrie dribble style. He's got hard. Eh, you know what? Jalen Rose's six are better than Penny. I switch it back around. Never mind. I'm going back to Penny at 10 and Jalen Rose at 9. Because even though Penny's release might be slightly, slightly better, it's still not good and his six are worse as a whole. The worst fade, worst six. I like Penny Hardaway. I don't think he's a bad, bad card, but like... I don't know. At this point in the year, release is super important. Both of those guys have bad releases. And at the end of the day, that's kind of the thing that kills them. So going with both of them at number 10 and number nine, number eight, John Wall. Now this John Wall, I understand he's only six foot three. He's got a big player build makes him look bigger than six three. Now, I don't know why he's not six four this year. He's been six four several years in a row in my team this year. He's not apparently, but I mean, his stats and badges are unbelievable across the board. Elite half removable enforcer edition, everything else. Really, really good card, but his fate isn't good. And weirdly enough, they didn't change behind the back either. So there is kind of some animation limitations compared to what you expected with John Wall. But love the release. Super athletic. Good escape. Great dribble style. Great drag back. Fun card to use at a very minimum. Very fun card to use. Really good release. Nice long wingspan. Big player build for a shorter point guard. Like, I think putting him at eight is totally fair. I would take him over Jalen Rose and Penny Wardaway. He's probably my favorite viable point guard in the game, or at least near the top of the list. At number seven... I'm going to go with Derek White, who is um, one of the NBA Finals cards. I think he's better. Drew Holiday's not on this list at all. I think he's better than that Drew Holiday because he's got better sigs and a better release. I, I actually really like this card. He's a super solid defender. Almost every key defensive half. Great playmaking badges. Great shooting badges and great finishing badges. Only 6'4", but with a 6'7 wingspan. Really good defense. And then animations that I actually really like as well. Released it is absolutely money. Top tier sigs are pretty much Kyrie Dribble style. Kemba Escape, Steph behind the back. John Wall's drag back. Really good sigs as a whole. Great, great sigs. But... He has only 6'4". He could be a little better as a slasher, maybe. I don't know. 85 driving duck isn't the best. I like the card a lot, though. I think he's really good. I'd take him over John Wall for sure, and I think putting him 7 is totally fair. Number 6, Doug Christie. The best Galaxy Oval PG in the game, in my opinion. The only Galaxy Oval point guard on this list as well. 6'6 um, six, six with a 6'9 wingspan, so he's got pretty good size. Badge-wise, awesome. Has half animals for days. Has amazing defense. Great shooting badges. And the key finishing badges, bulldozer, post or precision dunker, 90 driving dunk, 93 ball. Awesome release as well with the Pro 2 fade, with Kemba escape, um, with Jamal Murray behind the back, with Steph's drag back. Like, as an Opal, he is the best Opal point guard in the game, bar none, in my opinion. Really, really good card. Honestly, very slept on, maybe because he's an Opal. Uh, but he was one of the best free cards that dropped all season, to be completely honest, especially at the point guard position. Putting him number six feels totally fair. Honestly, feels even a little low. Like, I like him a little more personally. At least I think you can make an argument than J.R. Smith. But the thing about J.R. is, I mean, similar size. Also 6'6 six, six with a 6'10 wingspan instead of 6'9. Um, player builds are very similar. Badge-wise, JR is as a whole more complete, especially with finishing and shooting badges. 98 driving dunk, 99 three ball, 98 speed, excel, speed ball. Amazing defense. The thing about JR is I don't love, love the release. It's not bad though. Trey Fade is really good. Perfect sigs. Like he's really good. He's very good. But his release could be a teensy tiny bit better in my opinion. I think that's the main thing that I don't like as much about him than I like about the next two guys in this list. And that's why those guys are slightly higher than him. And that's why he's only at number five. For example, number four, Shea Gilgis Alexander. He on paper is not quite as good stat and badge wise as JR is, although he is very close. But I like his release more. 
That's the main thing. I do. Um, his stats may not be quite as good, but he's still a really solid defender, still a great playmaker, shooter, and an elite level finisher. And has a release that I like more. I think his upper is better, which helps his tray fade to be smoother and easier to time. And then his SIGs are just as good as um, JR's. As a whole, I still think JR, and this, this SGA card's been out for two months, two and a half months, and he's still really, really good at his position. Definitely, I think, deserving of a top tier spot on a non-gambling point guard list. Number three is Clyde Drexler, who's literally SGA, but a little bit better. Releases are about the same speed. He's an inch taller than SGA. He's got slightly better finishing animations, in my opinion. Defensively, they're about the same. Honestly, they're very similar, kind of across the board. But I like Clyde slightly more because of being an inch taller. Now, I will say Clyde's base card only has gold handles for days. That's kind of an issue, yes, but I have Hoff Candles for days on my Clyde. I think a lot of other people do as well. Um, he's been out for a while, but just like SGA, he's got really good staying power and is still an elite level top tier point guard in my team. The top two guys, number one, Jokic is at the number two spot mainly because of the fact that he is um, six foot 11. That's the really the only reason he's this tight because animation wise, he's not as good as pretty much any of these guys most of them anyway the top that like he's not as good as any of these four guys anyway i'll say that animation wise but he's 6 11 with super complete stats and badges like it's hard to argue with that level of size and the thing is especially at a competitive level having a Jokic next to primary ball handlers fits better than putting like i would much rather run Jokic next to glenn rice and josh smith than i would run clyde drexler next to glenn rice and josh smith or sga you know what i mean that size is really valuable and there are enough elite level shot creators at the two and the three to justify using a guy like Jokic at the pg spot and i think he is legitimately if you use him properly one of the very best cards in the game especially at the pg spot still because of mainly because of his size now his release is still acceptable he's got a couple of half decent sigs he can still put the ball on the floor and still do some nice things as well but again the main value of the side card is his completeness especially at his size and then you get to number one who is smaller than Jokic but kind of similar idea Wes Unseld's only listed at 6'7 but his player build is bigger than that not only that he is also a really versatile defender he's really good on the interior and the perimeter and he also is a very capable shooter and playmaker um the thing, other thing about him compared to Jokic is his release is much better. Kobe base, John Collins upper is really good, and he's got better sigs. He's just a better interior big than Jokic at the point guard position, if that makes sense. And for me, I would rather have him, despite his being four inches shorter, because player build-wise, he only looks about two inches shorter. And then also, again, the animations are much better. I feel like he provides the great, the best mix you're going to get out of especially a non-gambling point guard right now of size, defensive versatility but still being great offensively having nice animations and an elite level release and to me that provides a lot of value so i think west unsealed is probably the best non-gambling point guard in, in my team right now if you're looking for a primary shot creator i get it west unsealed and Jokic aren't going to be your top choices but for me there are enough primary shot creators at the two at the three even at the four at this point in the year where you can find other guys to put the ball on the floor and you don't need to run your offense through your PG. And that's why guys like Unseld and Jokic are so high for me. So that is going to do it for this video. I hope y'all did enjoy. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe. I'll be back with more 2K content very, very soon. And I appreciate y'all. Peace.